the scene. Why is authenticity, from a commercial perspective, let's not think of anything else for the moment, just a purely commercial perspective, why is authenticity as an idea important? Well, um, a number of authors that we've been reading uh, referenced here on some of the slides are that authenticity is a better predictor of purchase intent than brand love, trust, and credibility. There's fascinating ideas um, here about love, trust, credibility, but authenticity trumps it. Um, authentic brands have better margins at lower promotional costs, so potentially more profitable. And if you look here, the authenticity brand index shows that there's a strong correlation, almost undoubtedly causal, between word of mouth and authentic brands. People want to talk about um, authentic brands. There's a story. And for me, perhaps one of the most fascinating uh, statistics is, is the one here. Uh, the latest figures I can find, uh, I know they're pretty old, 2004, but still, it gives an indication that 500 billion worldwide trade in fakes, what the New York Times calls manufacture. So strong foundations for why um, authenticity is important from a commercial standpoint, but surely there's more to it than that. And indeed, there is. And I was kind of disturbed because I read the, uh, some research done with um, US-based business executives, and 50% of them, uh, when interviewed, felt that their lives were empty and meaningless, which really was pretty disturbing. And I think, actually, if you look at this book here, Thomas Friedman, he captures, for me, this quandary between commerciality and the drive for wealth, exhibited by the Lexus, the car Lexus, but also this desire to have moral and ethical value. And for me, this is really what's at the heart of this whole idea of, of authenticity. It's that second piece. And I think, you know, what's fascinating, if you're any of you familiar with the work of Professor Klaus Schwab, he's the uh, chairman of the World Economic Forum, and he's famous for speaking at Davos. And he's written a book called The Fourth industrial revolution. And he talks about this fourth industrial revolution, about ubiquitous um, computing, intelligent robots, self-driving cars. You, you, you know the sort of thing um, I, I mean and what he's talking about. And he talks about this extensively. But the reason I think authenticity is so key and captured on this slide here is this fourth industrial revolution, which is at the end here, you've got the first column, the second, third, the fourth, is that authenticity is this ultimate consumer sensibility around the experience economy. So this is how things will be judged. And I think, for me, this is fascinating and is part of this, uh, this importance of this idea of authenticity. But also, this great slide here um, in John Nesbitt's book about um, uh, high-tech, high-touch, he talks about the two biggest markets in the US economy being consumer technology and the escape from consumer technology. And for me, this is right at the heart of this discussion. But also, there seems to be a sort of retractment. And NATO, the, North, um, the, uh, the, the um, uh, defense uh, organization NATO, have this wonderful acronym called VUCA, if you've not heard of it before, um, I put it on the slide here. It's about volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. This is what sort of military planners look to and try and understand. And the reason I've, I've shown it by this dark cloud is I think many consumers are just concerned about what's coming next. You know, the prediction is by the, um, in about 10 years' time, about 40% of jobs will be, be done by robots and algorithms. Who's not scared about that? So there's this whole thing happening about a desire for meaning, complexity. No wonder authenticity is becoming increasingly important. But that's all quite serious. Let's move to something and I'll have a little bit of fun. Um, this is Altoids. Um, some of you may be familiar with this mint. Many of you uh, won't be. But it's been around since around 1750. But, what I wanted to talk about briefly before handing over to Tatiana is that when the head of design at P&G, a lady called Claudia Kochka, talked about this brand, she said we could never 
own that brand because we would destroy the very things that make it authentic, the very thing that gives it 400% better margin than the nearest competitor. And here are the things that she said in the article that I reviewed. And I thought this was really fascinating, that this brand now owned by Wrigley um, has so much going for it, but her view is that a company like her own, her words, not mine, would actually take away what makes it unique. So that's my introduction. Now I'm handing over to Tatiana. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. So now that Martin walked you through our background and why, let me walk you a little bit um, through um, how we went about discovering what authenticity means to consumers and um, what that means to you. So um, what we do is a start very broad. We don't want to bias their opinions and their perceptions. So we start by using imagery and associations as well as probing on emotionals and cues in order to understand what is it that authenticity means in the mind of the consumer. And later on, we then start funneling down and asking specifically about authenticity when it comes to products. So we will ask them what products they associate with a the theme, uh, different categories, as well as brand. And we do that through both visual associations, uh, some traditional questionings, as well as some projective and enabling techniques so we can get a deeper dive and understanding of what the theme means to consumers. We conducted a study across five different markets. So we have about 2,700 interviews in the US, UK, France, Brazil, and China. And our respondent groups um, are evenly split across different uh, age uh, breaks, including uh, Gen Z, Millennials, um, Gen X, and Baby Boomers. And what we wanted to start with is first creating a study that will help answering some of the key questions that a lot of our clients were, were wondering. So what does it mean to be authentic? Can a brand own authenticity? Uh, does it impact purchase? Are brands even trying too hard nowadays to be authentic, right? So um, those are just some of the key questions that we attempted to answer. And what we did is that we first started by using a technique called eCollage. It's a platform that we have that has been around since 2005. And we conducted thousands of studies with this technique. And what eCollage is, is a projective and enabling technique that is interactive and uses images as catalysts to get to the deeper um, perceptions and understanding of what a word or a theme means in this case. So consumers are given a custom set of images, about 100 to 120. They are adapted to each one of our studies. And they can pick as many images as they want. They can rotate. They can play around, add text, add background colors, and so on. And once they finish their e-collage, we actually ask them a follow-up question. So why did you create this collage? What do the images represent? And in this case, we specifically asked them to create a collage that explains um, what they think authenticity means when it comes to products and buying different products. So at the end of the day, we do look at the images, but the most important thing is what do the images represent and what are they trying to tell us? What you can see right now is actually what we call an image cloud and is a collection of images that tended to be selected when respondents were explaining what authenticity meant to them. So the larger the image, the higher the selection. And what we can see from here is that for the most part, the images are pretty similar across markets with a few exceptions. And we don't have a lot of differentiation between the sizes of the images even within um, some markets. Right? The only place where we see a little bit more differentiation is in China. And they tend to use fewer words to do um, their explanation. But what did the images mean? And what we discovered through factor analysis, which is usually a technique used, uh, an advanced analytics technique used on quantitative studies, but we can apply it to eCollage as well and look into what images tend to be picked together and what is it that they mean. And what we discovered is that authenticity is actually multidimensional and it has different meanings for respondents across all five markets that we interviewed. 